Welcome to Empower to Grow, the podcast. I am your host, Hanan al Basha, the business doctor. Following our conversations with empowered women who woke up one day and consciously claimed, I am more than enough, I am worthy, I am empowered to grow. And along their empowering journey towards realizing their own potential and their quest for growth, they became a beacon of hope and guidance for others. May you also find your inner power to grow. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Empowered to Grow. I'm your host, Hanan al Today, I have a very special episode. Um, a very Yes, I have a very special episode and a very special guest. And amazingly, uh, we connected online a while back, but we never got to talk in person until just before our episode, just to discover we are connected in more ways than we thought, <laughs> which is always a beautiful surprise to connect with empowered women in that way. Um, Navina Dasuki is an expat and she has been an expat for over 20 years, which meant that she went across about five continents, seven countries, and what, 20 cities was it? <laughs> Something along those lines. <laughs> <laughs> and um, she has a beautiful family of four children and of course that the expat life comes with a lot of challenges especially when you're a parent and she's made it her mission that she kind of supports other expat women on that journey uh, she's currently in Dubai though and uh, she's created this amazing platform called um, coffee with an expat and uh, she features a lot of um empowered women, to say the least, to talk about their own journeys and bring their level of expertise to the group. So Naveen, welcome. Thank you for accepting my invitation. Hanan, thank you so much. It's such a pleasure to be on this podcast with you. Um, I've been following you for quite a while now, and you are one of the women that I look up to because you do so much to empower other people. Thank you. Um, and you help us grow and you enlighten us and help us find our way. So thank you for that. I'm, I'm honored and humbled. Thank you so much. It, it's, I think I just found my calling and uh, it's been a few decades in the making, but I'm just happy that I've reached that point where um, I think I was just talking to a friend earlier today and we were talking, you know, about women and women empowerment and stuff. And I'm like, I don't have to defend myself when I say I empower women because I'm not saying, oh, let's all hate men, but it's like, let's find ourselves. And I think that conversation is very different. Absolutely. I agree with you on that because I was recently having this discussion myself. Um, so we, we are connected in this way too. Yeah. <laughs> I think we're connected in many ways. Yes. But I like, you know, empowering women does not mean that you're a feminist and does not mean that you're against men. Yeah. There are so many men in my life, uh, especially my husband, that has empowered me and supported me to be where I am right now and vice versa. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, that's very, it's very, true. Important to very important to recognize mm -hmm. that. So uh, taking that a step further now, when, when I sent you a message, I'm like, Naveen, I, I, I launched my podcast, Empowered to Grow, and I'd love to feature you as a speaker. And what what did that phrase mean to you? Like, on a personal level, on a professional level, what does empower to grow mean? Empower to grow means giving other people the platform to have a voice, to share their expertise, their passion, their knowledge, to inspire others, to motivate others, and also to learn and to grow from, yeah. from you and from, from ourselves as well, because I believe that every time we speak, we may say things we probably didn't realize that we knew yeah, inside exactly. of ourselves. It comes out, right? <laughs> exactly. Um, and then you have that kind of like aha moment, like, wow, where did that yeah. come from? So I live for I those. It's, it's, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I believe it's, it's, a, it's a continuous and evolving growing process. So that for me, any opportunity to speak um, and to have my voice heard or to have other people's voices heard is an opportunity for growth. I love that. I love that. So, well, you're empowered to grow in your own way, just with a very short intro that I did. Um, would you share with us a bit of your journey and how you found your voice? <laughs> well, like you, it's been decades in the making. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, it's been, a, it's been a long journey, to be honest with you. I started, I, I married young. I was mm -hmm. married when I was about 21. Wow. I had my first child before I was 23 and then started moving around with my husband for his work. Um, and that's been our journey for the last 20 odd years. So we've lived in, well, I've lived in eight countries, including Australia where I was born and raised. And I've had four children along the way. And over those years, I've, you know, I've 
tried different things, you know, I've worked in different fields, I've experimented, I was just trying to find what my passion is, what is it that I want to do? Um, and I have to say one of the most enriching moments in my life was when I was helping refugees in Geneva once the wow. refugee crisis happened in Syria. Yeah. Um, it was, there's nothing like supporting and helping others with no expectations in return. Of course. There, nothing, nothing beats it, you know, and that kind of made me realise that's something I always love to do. I always love to support and help others. I've always been the shoulder that people, you know, people come to cry on. Um, and it's just what I do naturally. And I think taking that and then moving here in Dubai and just seeing how um, people kind of struggle here to connect and to make friends, even though it's a very expat dominant city, yes. uh, people are really in, alone and in their own world. I found that people may struggle financially to get uh, professional help um, because it's a very expensive city uh, or they just don't know who to reach out to. So that combined with my love to support others made me create this platform, Coffee with an Expert. And I realized this was my calling, was to be there, to yeah. support others, to mm -hmm. empower them, to give them a platform where they can have a voice, um, you know, and just to give back to the expert community. Because I realized as well that I don't have a home in the yeah. sense of a home. Like I'm not Egyptian. I'm Egyptian, but I'm not Egyptian. I'm Australian, yeah. but I'm not Australian. Yeah. And yeah. I'm, 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 I'm a global citizen. I feel so, you. So, yeah, so my world, my world really is, or my home really is the expat community. And yeah. that's what I've kind of like realized. And I thought, well, I need to give back to this community that has given me this amazing experience, this amazing life, this amazing journey. And I'd like to give it back by sharing my experience, my knowledge, just to support others that have, you know, may potentially be in my position or are going through that, you know, that process because there are many challenges as you probably would know yes. um, in this expat journey so that's really you know how I found my calling and, and I do what I do I love that I love that and and you also you're a parent and you have got less four kids and it's it's also that it's being an expat and juggling parenting is also challenging because you don't you don't have you know the the kind of extended support or or mom I need to go to the office now just like you know <laughs> let me drop the child off at your place and uh, I think that in itself also needs a needs a community needs um needs a space where you feel even if there is no there's no one that you can technically leave your child with but just knowing that you're okay and you have that someone to hold your back when you need to, um, I think that in itself is also part of what you empower women to do generally. Absolutely. Community is so important and having a, a network wherever you go is just as important. Uh, just like you said, even though they may not be somebody that you can leave your kids with for days, but I think in time of need that you definitely need to have that support because, you know, you're on your own. Yeah. And friends, friends are your family. They, they are the ones that you're going to fall back on uh, physically, yeah. you know, if not emotionally. Um, so it's important to have that network. So especially if your husband, you know, travels for work, yeah. you're alone a lot of the time, you know, this journey does make you very strong. It teaches you a lot of things. It teaches you to be self, you know, really self-reliant. But there's no question in my mind that having a strong network of people around you can make or break your uh, expat assignment or that's journey true. that's true so knowing what you know now after about two decades <laughs> of being an expat, yes. um what would you what advice would you impart on your 19 year old self oh <laughs> that's a good question I, you know i haven't really thought about that to be honest but i would say um take more risk um don't be afraid of the unknown Mm -hmm. and if you and I think it's true I know I know it's very cliche and we hear this a lot but it is true if you want something bad enough and you work hard for it you can make it happen nothing is impossible it really isn't and I, I really wish that I, I knew that when I was younger you yeah. know that but you know everything happens for a reason at the end that's of the true. day as well that's true yeah. but as, as you said I think it's it's um it's partially because of the conviction believing in it and then the second part of the conviction is not doubting yourself. And I think they both go together for, for us to say, okay, 
anything is possible. Because I know, as you said, it, we we hear it a lot as cliche and, and we always in our mind or we've been conditioned to come up with it with the objections immediately. It's like, no, it's not. I'm in the wrong place. I'm in the wrong you know setting. Um, my family won't let me. Whatever it is, we always find an excuse because yeah. that's how we've been conditioned. But it is true that well, now I'm a strong believer of that too. So <laughs> I wish I, that's the advice I would impart on my 19 year old self too. So going to the other side of the spectrum or the end of the spectrum, what would you like from a time capsule perspective? What would you like your 70 year old self to thank you for? Actually, sorry, not 70, 90 year old self to thank you for. <laughs> you know, I'd like to look back and I actually heard this from somebody at a talk I attended uh, here in Dubai. Mm -hmm. And he was very inspiring. Um, and somebody asked him that question. And his response was to look back and have no regrets. That I didn't do something that I wanted to do. And I said, you know, he didn't have the chance to do it. It's actually to go for it and do it. Yeah. And I, that, really, that really resonated with me. And I think that's what I'd like to thank myself for, is that I tried everything I desired to try. And just to be grateful for all the opportunities that I have. And, 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 and just really do my best to enjoy it, to embrace it, to, to learn, to grow from it and take the risk. I love that. I love that. And that, that is it. A life with no regrets is, uh, is a privilege, I guess, on, on so many levels. Yes, so very much so. <laughs> <laughs> so you're on a stage now and you're addressing tens of thousands of women. And the topic is about <laughs> and I'm sure <laughs> and the topic is about being empowered to grow. Um, what would be that last statement, that last message you leave them with? My last statement would be to be proud of what you have chosen to be for yourself. And that does not mean you have to be a CEO. It could just be that you have a passion that, you know, does not generate any revenue, <laughs> but it's something that you wanted to succeed in and you did and you're proud of yourself. And that's growth. That, that's that. growth for me is that it can be as simple as that. It doesn't have to be complicated. Yeah, I love that. And that resonates so much with, you know, what I'm advocating for right now. And it is, it is coming from the realization that we, we expect to follow the success parameters of society, we expect to, to have those achievements or else we didn't make it. But actually waking up in the morning to keep yourself busy for two hours while the kids are in school, and you're doing something you're passionate about, that is a success in itself. Um, it, doing a small business that just barely covers the the revenues cover the expenses that is a, success, a successful business it's just doing something that your heart tells you is right and I think that's why we resonated on so many levels <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> it's it's breaking free of the shackles that that make us judge ourselves and I think that is the, uh -huh. is the really the bottom line message here that yeah know what you get to judge who you want to be what it's like the, the magnitude of what you want to be and be proud of yourself doing it. And I think that's absolutely, nice. absolutely. I think society plays a big role in that. And there's a lot of pressure to be achieving something. And I think we, like I said, are conditioned to also ask questions in a certain way. So when I meet you for the first time, oh, so what do you do? Yeah. So if I'm somebody that doesn't work and I'm a mom that stays at home or I have a passion or I just do photography for fun, yeah. you kind of feel like, oh, I don't really do anything you yeah. know like I'm not working or anything I just do photography or I just do this so I, I challenge people actually and I ask them to say to when you meet somebody to ask them what is your story mm -hmm. rather than what do you do That's, so I then that. I love that yeah you know what I mean it just that, it just yeah. opens the door to hear what who are they what are they about rather than what they do I'm gonna so. use that so <laughs> here you go story. I've challenged you now <laughs> So um, where can listeners find you? I'm going to put the links anyway in the, in the description on the notes of the episode, but I'd like them to hear from you. Where can they find you in virtual space? In virtual space. Wow. <laughs> so many years, man. <laughs> uh, so I'm on LinkedIn, Naveen Altasuki, um, and I'm quite active on Instagram as coffee with an expat. I have a Facebook group, which is for women. Um, and it's a global group. So anybody around the world is welcome. It's called coffee with expat women. 
Um, and I have a Facebook page, Coffee with an Expert, but those are the, my, my main avenues. And my website will be la launching soon. So. Oh, great. Looking forward to it then. <laughs> yes, me too. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> I mean, thank you so much. I loved it. It was rich to the point and definitely empowering in its own self. Hanan, thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure. And I have enjoyed thoroughly talking to you about this topic. Thank you. Well, as always, it's empowered you, empowers others, as I always uh, call for. So um, believe in you, trust you, and be proud of you. And just to take care of you. Love, abundance, and prosperity to you all. Bye, everyone. Thank you for listening to the Empower to Grow podcast. For further engagement with a tribe of empowered women, join my Facebook group, Empower to Grow, or visit my website, www.hananelbasha.com. I'll catch you on the next episode. And until then, know that empowered you empowers others. Love, abundance, and prosperity to you all.